Good afternoon. It is my privilege to be here today to share with you the results from the second quarter of the year as it relates to our tourism industry. Before I proceed, I would like to thank all of you, first and foremost, all of the people of Bermuda for their unwavering spirit, indomitable will, and unceasingly hard work that they have put into this industry and that they continue to show as it relates to revitalizing the tourism uh, industry. It is what inspires me and it is what will help us to achieve the kind of tourism success that this country so richly deserves. It has been encouraging to hear from many of you in the industry in the past few weeks and to receive stories of your confidence that the business is indeed coming back. But in order to attain that success, we know that the hard work must continue as we advance to meet both the challenges and opportunities that we face. Ladies and gentlemen, let me share with you the progress thus far. First, I'm happy to say that we saw an upward trend in air arrivals in May and June, which both increased by approximately 6%. As I will discuss further on, this is a very good sign and indicative of the trends we are seeing moving forward into quarter three and beyond. However, an unusually weak April saw a 17% decline, essentially making our air arrivals flat for uh, this quarter, with a total of 73,013 visitors flying to the island, which was 173 less than the same period in 2012. This disparity was primarily a result of the hundreds of athletes we hosted last April during the 2012 Carifta Games. Total visitors to Bermuda for the second quarter of 2013 declined by 12% year over year, with 210,964 visitors uh, and tourists arriving in the months of April, May, and June. In analyzing the data, once again, we see that this decline was fueled mainly by a decrease in cruise and yacht arrivals. We knew going into the second quarter that there would be 15 less cruise calls scheduled as compared to the same period in 2012. However, this decline was exacerbated by the cancellation of four further calls due to Heritage Wharf repairs and three cancellations due to a fire on the grandeur of the seas. The quarter thus ended with 133,676 people cruising here, representing a decline of 17%. Yacht arrivals also saw a 43% decline year over year. That is, of course, directly related to the biannual Newport to Bermuda race, which happened in June of last year. Yacht arrivals will increase next year as the race returns. The cruise and yacht markets notwithstanding, when we look at the numbers broken down by our key regional markets, we were very pleased to see increases of 8% and 10% from the United Kingdom and Europe, respectively. Overall, visitors from the United States remained flat. However, our key gateway markets of New York grew by 9.5%. Massachusetts grew by nearly 1.5%. Pennsylvania by 3.5%, and Georgia by more than 3%. Looking at figures from the rest of the world category, year over year we saw an 11% decline in visitors that can be attributed to the spike in arrivals from the Caribbean we saw in April 2012 for the Carifta Games. Looking north, Canada is another area that faced challenges due to reduced service by Air Canada, which dropped its daily flight from Toronto to five times a week in April, three times a week in May, and four times a week in June. This caused visitor arrivals from Canada to decline by 9%. This is obviously an area of concern, and I can assure you that we are making every effort to resolve the reduction of airlift by Air Canada from the Toronto Gateway that we've experienced in 2013. We have also held meetings with WestJet to determine opportunities uh, with that company, and I will keep you updated as the progress of those talks continue. 
I anticipate a favorable solution to this current situation in the very near future. In the meantime, you may recall that in my last report, I talked about the reduction we had seen in business and convention travel in the first quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to say that arrivals from this sector increased by 14% and 27% respectively, mitigating a smaller decline of 2% by those saying they were visiting on vacation and an 8% decline in those visiting friends and relatives. The growth of the convention market especially is a good sign, as is the fact that overall visitors to the island stayed longer in the second quarter. Length of visits increased from 5.82 nights to 7.61 nights, and visitors staying in commercial accommodations also increased with an average stay of 6.42 nights, up from 4.73 nights. A 35% increase in the time spent on island is a significant statistic. And those numbers are particularly important as they lead to more money being spent in our hotels, restaurants, taxis, and shops. As we continue our efforts through the third quarter, we are particularly heartened by the reports we, receive, uh, we are currently receiving from our hotel partners. The pacing of Bermuda Hotel Association members reveals solid bookings that commenced in May and have continued through August. So far in the peak months of May, June, and July, which is where it counts, we have welcomed over 5,000 more air visitors, a 6% increase of the same period in 2012. Looking ahead to the fall, we are receiving some encouraging reports of partners who are seeing demand for rooms straight through October, except the traditionally soft period in September after Labor Day in the United States. Of course, in order to fill our hotel rooms, we need a way to deliver guests to our shores. On that front, I am happy to report that the new Delta service out of New York's LaGuardia Airport has thus far been well received. Delta has been pleased with their lured factors, and all indications are that we can expect this flight to continue through winter 2014 and beyond. While we view the air situation in the ever-important New York metropolitan area as a positive, we are working diligently to address those gateways that have presented a concern. In Philadelphia, for instance, we continue to work with US Air in an effort to convince them to reconsider their decision to reduce their schedule between January and March of 2014. We recognize that we can do everything possible to create demand for this destination, but if there are not sufficient and convenient ways for our customers to get here, they will go elsewhere. That must not happen. And we will continue to explore all avenues possible to ensure that no prospective customer will turn away from Bermuda simply because there wasn't the means to get here. Ladies and gentlemen, the Department of Tourism and the Bermuda Tourism Board continue to work tirelessly in marketing Bermuda and putting on numerous events to attract tourists to our shores. For their efforts, I remain extremely grateful. I will not take up your time in enumerating all the good work that the Department and the Board has done, but that information is available to you upon request. I strongly believe that the plan we have set in motion to create a tourism authority is vital to our success and remains my number one priority. I have stated on record that we need an entity which would ensure that tourism is in the hands of industry experts who can drive this critical industry with as much independence and, autonom and autonomy as possible. We are making significant progress on this front and I am pleased to confirm that we are very close to making this vision a reality. We cannot simply continue with business as usual. This government will create a paradigm shift in this industry, which I believe will be paramount to its revitalization. <laughs>